want to have their supplies they need for the day because I want to go ahead and start it. We got 52 minutes and I got a lot to, to get through in this time. So, picking up where we left off, we've been talking about some greens and radians. Uh, we first started all talking about degrees and radians with high, uh, the two different types of angle measurements that was degrees, going from degree minute seconds form uh, to that form and then back to regular old decimal form. And you also guys learned about what a radian was with the whole circle and the pipe cleaner. How many radians are in a circle? Six and a uh, and, and some change. Six and some change, yes, okay? And, it, and in actuality, when you kind of uh, reference that, about 6.28. That's how many uh, radians are in a uh, in a circle. So uh, I had you guys create this foldable, right? And you guys glued it in on the neon green paper on page 66. Yes. Okay. So this is how it should be labeled. This should be the title of the page, and this is how the foldable should be labeled. We are gonna now convert between radians and degrees. Okay. And so one flat will be for converting from radians to degrees. The other flat will be converting from degrees to radians. And not this will be all that's on the screen. Alright, so starting off with converting from degrees to radians. There is a formula, very simple formula for converting from radians to degrees, and that is you multiply whatever the radian is by 180 divided by pi. Uh, that's what So that is the formula. You basically multiply the radian by 180 over pi, and that's how you convert from degrees to radians. And these examples should be included inside of your two-fold foldable, okay? Under radians to degrees. I'll do the first one with you, then I'm gonna give you about two minutes to do the other three. So we're starting with 11 pi over six. So convert. This radian, and we know it's in radian one because of the pi. That lets us know it's in radian. Okay, whenever you're dealing with pi, all you do is you just multiply by 180 degrees all over pi. Now, for me, and hopefully for you, you really shouldn't need a calculator to do this all the way out because honestly, you're more likely to make mistakes. When you're multiplying, yes, you multiply straight across, but save yourself some time. If there's a pie on the top and a pie on the bottom, what happens to them? They cancel out. And look, doesn't isn't there a number that goes in the six that also goes in the 180? Six. Six divided by six is one. And 180 divided by six is 30. So really now all I need to type into my calculator is 11 times 30, which is what? 330. And that's how many degrees I have, because the denominator would have just been 1 times 1, which is just 1, and 330 over 1 is just 1. Okay? So I want you guys to do B, C, and D. You're converting from radius to degrees. All right, so every single one of these you should have multiplied by 180 over pi. Every single one. So for B, Michael, what did you get for B? Four. Exactly, it should have been negative 270. Anybody not get negative 270? Okay, for C, you had to multiply by pi over 180. And let's see, what did you get? 320 degrees? Two forty. So we know that three goes into one eighty. How many times? So then sixty times four. Oh, oh, way around. Six times four divided by three. We can do it that way. Uh, and the last one for D, let's go with Nicholas, what'd you get? Um, I got negative 30. It's gonna be negative 30, yes. Pies cancel, and there's still a negative one there. When you cancel out that pie. And of course, six goes into 80, 30 degrees. Okay? Simple enough, yeah? Again, with this unit, it's only three lessons, but it's a lot of like little things that are gonna add up to be one big thing for our next 
shooters, okay? So we're hitting like a lot of little things like what is a radiant, degrees and segments, how to convert from radiance to degrees, and now degrees to radiance. So a lot of like little things that are going to add up. So converting from degrees to radiance is the opposite. So instead of multiplying by 180 over pi, this time we're multiplying by pi over 180. And a good way to kind of keep them, like, and not to mix them up, if you're trying to go to degrees, you shouldn't have any more pi's. So your pi's should cancel out. The only way that's going to happen is if you have a pi on the bottom. So with whatever you get after you simplify, it's going, to, it's going to be your radius. So I'll do the first one with you, and then you'll do the other four on your own. I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. Multiply. Every single one of these uh, degrees are all over 1. So I can still do the whole multiplying thing. Okay? My pi is not going to cancel out, which it shouldn't because I'm converting to radian. Okay? So we want to make sure that we don't cancel it out. And now, is there a number that can go into 360 that also goes in 180? 180. 180. 180 goes into 180 one time, and 180 goes into 360. Nice. So the radian measure for 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. You don't have to put radians, but I don't know that you mean 2 pi radians if you make sure you include the pi. If you did 2 times pi in your calculator, real quick, do 2 times pi in your calculator, you get... 6.28. Six sections with a little bit left over. Where's the pi you see the co connection? You press the second button and then the carrot button. That's how you get to pi. You, you see what I did there? Exactly. Okay. The button? The button, um, putting it right above the door. Every single one should be multiplied by pi over 180. So, Christian, what'd you get for B? For B? 180? Uh, I think we should multiply by 2 times. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's fix this one. So, I got you over here. You got 180 times pi over 180. It would just be pi. Yes, because the 180s cancel. All right, Brian, what about this one, about 90? What is that as a radian? Uh, pi over 2. Pi over 2, exactly. Yes, over here, negative 45 degrees to convert to a radian. Tanner, what is it? Uh-huh. Negative 1 pi over 4. Yes, you can put negative 1 fourth pi, negative 1 pi over 4, and they're both the same thing. And the last one, 120, Luke? 2 pi over 2. It would be 2 pi over 3. Yes, make sure that, again, if you're using your calculator, you do convert your decimals back into radians. There's going to be a reason for that. However, of course, you can always do your simplifying. Your simplifying and seeing that this reduces down to that. Questions on converting from degrees to radians? Yes? How do you convert it back to the decimals to radians? Decimals to radians. Well, that's the, that's the thing. If you multiply... 120 times pi divided by 180, it will not give you a fraction. In order to get that fraction, you just have to do 120 divided by 180 to get that fraction and then you subtract pi to it. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get that fraction. So don't include pi if you're going to go the calculator route. All right? No problem. So, the next thing, we're going to flip over to page 67 since you guys said there were no questions, right? Right. Okay. So, next thing we're going to talk about is angles in standard position. I'm handing that out to you now. Okay? And angles in standard position deals with your coordinate plane, your x and y axes. Okay? So, this is page 67. Again, this is page 67. 
So what does it mean for an angle to be in standard position? If an angle is in standard position, the vertex is located at the origin, and the initial side is on the positive x-axis. Okay? That's what it means to be in standard position. You have an angle. One side is called the initial side, one side is called the terminal side. And if it's in standard position, that initial side is located on the positive x-axis. It does not move, it stays there. The terminal side is the side that gets to move around. Now an angle is called a quadrantal angle if the terminal side actually lies on one of the axes. So if it actually lies on the positive x-axis, y-axis, negative x-axis, or negative y-axis, it's actually called a quadrantal angle. And what we're going to do is we are going to basically create a nice little uh, functioning angle in standard position. So the terminal side and the initial side of an angle are already cut out. That was one of the things I was already sitting on your desk in the paper clip. Go ahead and separate those from the paper clip. And what I want you to do is I want you to glue down your initial side along the positive x-axis. So on this pink paper, I want you to glue down the initial side along your positive x-axis, which is located where? Where's your positive x-axis? Right. 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 It's to the right. So you're going to glue down your initial side here. Because like I said, the initial side does not move. It is stuck to the positive x-axis. So we're going to glue it so that it is stuck to the positive x-axis. So this is your initial side. So you've already glued down your initial side. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your scissors and very carefully take your terminal side and put, make a hole at the edge of your terminal side. Not at the arrowhead, but at the, uh, at the other end. And then I want you to make a hole using your scissors on the origin on this pink paper. Now, very carefully, I want you to put the end of the brand through the hole that's on your terminal side and then push that through onto the pink paper at the origin. What you have done is created an angle in standard position. Now, let's glue it down into our notebooks on page 67. Being careful that you kind of glue around the... Uh, the corded plane, so then that way you still have the freedom to move uh, your terminal side around to create different types of angles. Any questions? It is the side that moves. Now, one thing, I don't believe I ever said this, but I don't think anyone did it differently when I had you create like the 45 degree angle and the, um, what was the second one I said? 200 and 20. 20. The 180 degree angle. Everybody moved their terminal side in this direction. Everybody moved it counterclockwise, which is fine, which is very fine. When you move your terminal side counterclockwise, and you guys can write this in somewhere, but this is important to remember, you are creating a positive angle. You're creating a positive angle when you move it counterclockwise. So yes, this right here would be my little makeshift version of a 45 degree angle. If you move it in the clockwise direction, what kind of angle do you think you're creating? You're creating a negative degree angle. So again, if you move it clockwise, it is a negative degree angle. It's still in standard position because your initial side is still on the positive x-axis, but you're creating different types of angles and going in that direction. So this right here, actually what I want you guys to do with your, I um, can't call it a figure, but whatever this is, I want you to give me a negative 270 degree angle. Create a negative 270 degree angle. I want you to do that right now using your terminal side and everything, and then I want you to hold up your notebook so I can see it. 270 degrees would be, yes, 
Exactly. It would be basically a positive 90 degree angle. So, 270, a negative 270 degree angle. I'm moving clockwise. This is 90 degrees. 180 degrees. And lastly, 270. So your terminal side should have been like that. But this would have been a negative 270 degree angle. Okay? Same thing as a 90 degree angle if we have moved it counterclockwise. Okay? Questions on that? Now, 270 degrees and 90 degrees, they are the same type of position, just turned in different directions. This here is called co-terminal angles. On page 68, Swing over. We're going to be talking about co-terminal angles on page 68. Oh, what's the title of that? Yeah. No. You are handwriting this. Okay? Co-terminal angles. They are two angles that have the same initial side and terminal sides, but different angle measures. So, like I said, negative 270 and 90 degrees are examples of co-terminal angles. They have the same initial side, same terminal side, but depending on what direction you move, you can have um, a different angle measure. All right, so, again, with co-terminal angles, they have the same initial side, and they have the same terminal side. But the difference does come when you start to spin it either clockwise or you start to spin it counterclockwise. Okay? So this example that you have over here, that's in degrees. I always start from my initial side, and if I head clockwise, I head, I have created a 60 degree angle. However, I started from my initial side and spun it back to where the terminal side was originally. I have gone 90, 180, 270 and an additional 30 degrees, which will make a negative 300 degree angle. They lie in the same position, the initial side and terminal side, but they're just different angle measures, making them coterminal. Okay? If I started the initial side and I spun it not one time around, but two times around, and then ended back at my terminal side, I would have another coterminal angle of 780 degrees. All these are examples of co-terminal angles. All right, and that's how, and that's exactly how you would show it. You wouldn't change the terminal of your side, but you would change the number of spirals that go around to meet the terminal side. Does that make sense? And it also works with um, with radians. Okay, this is an example of negative four pi radians going clockwise and then going counterclockwise is 7 pi over 4 radians. Now, if you're wondering where these numbers come from, how many degrees are in a circle? 360. 360 if you're dealing with degrees, but if you're dealing with radians, how many radians is 360 degrees? Uh, exactly, it is 2 pi. 2 pi. Okay? So when you're trying to determine coterminal angles, You either add or subtract multiples of 2 pi. Okay? That is how you determine coterminal angles. You either add or subtract multiples of 2 pi. And here comes the next activity. Yes, this is all on the same page because we are talking about coterminal angles on this page. So, are there any questions about coterminal angles before we get started with this activity? Yes, there are infinitely many coterminal angles. Yes, because you can continue to add multiples of 360 degrees, or subtract 360 degrees, or add 2 pi, or subtract 2 pi. Okay? So, this is what you guys are going to do. The sections are already cut out for you guys. That's what the little yellow papers are for. Okay? Basically, these are not in order. 
You have to determine which angles are coterminal angles of each other. There are three sets of degrees. There are three sets of radians. How this is going to line up into your notebook. This is what I want you guys to do. I want you, so basically you have one, two, three. You have three sets for degrees. You have three sets for radians. Basically, these little boxes represent the cutouts that you guys already have. Okay? I want you to arrange them. Which ones are coterminal angles with each other? You should have six lines, three in each line. You do have some blank ones. I'll talk about what the blank ones are in just a second, but I want you guys to try to determine which ones are coterminal angles of each other. How do you do that? If it's a degree. Add or subtract what? 360. 360 or add or subtract? 2 pi. 2 pi if you're dealing with radians, okay? So I want you guys to do that now. Can you go back to 